This is Introduction to Mechanical Engineering uh, in Mechanical and Electrical Engineering 2016 to 17 and this is question 7 on the exam paper and it's really about thermodynamics. Um, there are three parts to the question. The first part, part A, is about the um, energy transfer when heating or cooling something and you've got an equation given for it and then parts B and C are about the ideal gas law and the idea that pressure times volume divided by temperature is a constant. So let's look at this in turn. In question 7a we've got um, that 5 kilograms of water is to be heated from 20 degrees C to 30 degrees C and to do that we are using a heated iron bar weighing 2 kilograms um, Um, and what we want to say is the energy added to the water equals the energy lost from the bar. Okay, so this is a conservation of energy problem in a way um, that however much the bar cools down it's losing energy and that energy is going into the water and we're going to assume that all of the energy lost from the bar is uh, transferred into the water. So the energy added into the water is rho water Cp water V water delta T water and the energy added lost from the bar is rho uh, it's an iron bar so you subscript I CPI VI delta T I so let's go through and see what out of these things we know. There's a hint in the question that says density is mass divided by volume. Mass is density times volume. Rho V, mass equals rho V. Um, and so I can lump these things together and um, rho water times V water equals mass of water which equals 5 kilograms and similarly rho iron times V iron equals mass of iron which equals 2 kilograms. Um, Cp for water we're given is 4186 and the change of temperature of the water we know is 10 degrees Celsius. Just to remind you when you're dealing with temperature changes degrees Celsius and kelvins end up being the same. This is a change of 10 degrees Celsius, which is the same as a change of 10 Kelvin. So we've got 5 times 4186, and that's all in SI derived units, times uh, the change in temperature, which is 10. And again, that works in Kelvin, so that's fine. All the units match up there. Equals. We know that rho V for the steel, or for the iron, is 2 times 460 is Cp for the iron times delta Ti which is the only thing that we don't know. So delta Ti equals 5 times 4186 times 10 divided by 2 times 460 which equals 227.5 um, Kelvin or because it's a change in temperature I'm just going to say degrees C um, and the final temperature uh, 
um, of the iron bar well eventually it's just sitting in the water and it needs to not be transmitting any energy so it needs to be at 30 degrees because the water is going to be at 30 degrees so final temperature is 30 degrees C initial temperature is the 30 degrees C it's got to finish at plus the 227.5 degrees it's got to lose so it's 257.5 degrees C and that's the answer um, there's one thing to note here, I'm not convinced <laughs> by the question, um, because if you drop something at more than 100 degrees C into water, you're going to boil some water, and that might change what goes on here. If, you, if some of the water is lost as steam, then this 5 is no longer appropriate because some of the mass has disappeared, and... Um, some of the the energy required to boil something is slightly different to the energy just required to heat something there's a, a different set of thermodynamics we need to think about there um, so you know you could criticize the question I think but um, maybe what we'll do is we'll say uh, note that this doesn't include any analysis of steam lost by boiling and as a kind of first approximation to an answer this is good you know that the iron bar it's not going to work if the iron bar is at 50 degrees or 80 degrees it's got to be seriously hot to um, warm up this water so we've got an idea of the kind of temperature that we need uh, good, let's go on and look at question 7b now. Um, 7b is here, it's about the um, behaviour of a car tyre and we get information about the pressure and temperature in one state. We know the volume is constant and then we get the pressure in a, the temperature in another state and we want to find the pressure. So let's work through that. Um, PV over T equals constant. That's in the um, question. You're given that information. And it's worth noting here um, in the ideal gas law, T must be in Kelvin. So um, before we could, because we were looking at temperature differences, we were able to work with temperatures in Celsius, degree Celsius. Here, because we need the absolute temperature, it's got to be a number in Kelvin. Um, so everything else seems okay. We can say P1 equals 250 kilopascals. I'm going to write that as 250 times 10 to the 3 pascals. Uh, T1 equals 7 degrees C which equals 7 plus 273 Kelvin, uh, which equals 280 Kelvin. So to get from Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273 every time. Uh, T2 equals 47 degrees C, equals 47 plus 273 Kelvin, which equals, uh, this is going to be 320 Kelvin. Volume is constant, you're told. So P over T must be a constant. If volume is constant, PV over T is a constant, then P over T must also be constant. And that means that P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Again, um, we've looked at similar things in different questions, but if some quantity is constant, then the, that quantity in state 1 must equal that quantity, quantity in state 2, um, is what we're saying. And what we want to find is P2. Rearranging here, I'll get that P2 equals P1 multiplied by T2 over T1, which equals 250 times 10 to the 3 multiplied by 320 over 280, which equals 
285714. Um, I'm going to call that 286 kilopascals uh, to three significant figures. And that's the final answer there. Um, and we can finish off with part C. A gas sample occupies 150 times 10 to the 3 cubic centimetres. V equals 150 times 10 to the 3 cubic centimetres. There's a tricky bit here. We've got to work out um, what cubic centimetres are in cubic metres. Um, and because we're asked for an answer in cubic metres. I'm going to note that one centimetre equals 10 to the minus 2 metres. So one cubic centimetre equals 10 to the minus 2 metres all cubed, which equals 10 to the minus 6 cubic metres. Um, so this equals 150 times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic metres, which equals 150 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic metres. Um, that's V1. T1 equals 15 degrees C, which equals, uh, again, we're going to have to add 273. That's 288 Kelvin. And P1 is atmospheric pressure, um, one atmosphere, and I'm going to say that equals 10 to the 5 pascals. You can do this question if you don't remember that one atmosphere equals 10 to the 5 pascals. You can just keep the units in atmospheres because we also know that T2 equals uh, 90 degrees C which equals uh, 363 Kelvin. And P2 equals four times atmospheric pressure, so 4 atm, which equals four times 10 to the 5 pascals. And we know P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And we want to find P2, which equals P1. Oh, sorry, that's not true. We want to find V2, which equals um, V1 multiplied by P1 over P2 multiplied by T2 over T1. You might just want to spend some time checking where all those, why this is the opposite way around to this. But if you multiply both sides by T2 and divide both sides by P2, you'll get to the final answer. So this equals 150 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by four, oh, sorry, one times 10 to the five over four times 10 to the five multiplied by T2 over T1 is 363 over 288, which equals 150 times 10 to the minus three times, well, this is gonna be a quarter um, you can multiply it all out if you want, but I'm just going to say divided by 4 times 363 three, divided by 288 eight equals. And that is, um, I'm going to say 4.73 times 10 to the minus 2 cubic meters. Sorry, I've squeezed that into the bottom corner. Again, um, I'm doing that so I can show the whole answer on one sheet here um, because of the, si the 
camera that's convenient but I don't recommend squeezing everything onto one sheet in your exam please just feel free to take another piece of paper and space things out uh, for clarity but in any case that is my final answer here and that is question 7 complete